Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again, bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today, we'll be doing a guiding gameplay on a Nelson build focus for the new premium Tier 6 British battleship, the Duke of York. Now for this guiding gameplay, we'll look at the stats, the upgrade slots, the armor viewer, the consumables, as well as the commander of choice I just mentioned, Nelson. And so this will focus on Nelson as an accuracy dispersion build with the traits of Nelson. Alright? That's the Azure Lane commander. So first things first, we'll do a quick uh, look at the upgrade slots for this specifically. It's pretty similar to how I have Cunningham set up. I will be taking aiming systems for dispersion. And for the second one here, I'll be taking my propulsion mod. And for the third one, I will be looking at target acquisition because that's the only one we can take. <clears throat> we go to the stats quickly here. Uh, survivability, we got 60,000 uh, hull points, which is pretty darn good. Uh, the armor is not that great, and you'll see that in the armor viewer. Torpedo damage reduction belt, though, of 22%, which is kind of below average. Artillery, we've got low caliber guns. You only have 356s on here. We have a dual, a dual mount at the front of a 356, and then you got two quad mounts, one at the back and one at the front. Our firing range on this is 17.7 kilometers, because I do want range on here. Reload time, 29 seconds. That's average. For, but look at our turret time there. 45 second uh, turret time turn. That's the one drawback for um, taking Nelson here. It really increases your turret time. But then again, I'm trying to keep at a distance, so that should be okay. HE shells will do 7,000 damage and 41% uh, chance of fire. AP shells do 12,000, which is great because uh, Nelson with her big seven skill um, increases the HE and AP shells damage up by 15%, which is quite something. Secondaries are your standard for. 4.7 kilometers. We got eight dual 134s there. Maneuverability. Well, we got some good speed here. 28.8 knots, 79 meter, 7, 790 meter turn circle with a 18 rudder shift. Concealment, big ship, you're going to get spotted. Now, the armor viewer here, this is what I'm talking about. I'll just knock off these ones in the middle. I only want to look at, when I do these guides, the fore and aft section as well as the, um, the citadel. The citadel is in a nice spot. The citadel sits way below the water. However, we do have an issue with the uh, Citadel itself on the deck. It only has 13 mils of armor. So it may be way down in the water, but you can still be citadel um, through the broadside. you got to be aware of that. Even though we have an armored belt along there, you can still go in through the deck. So you just got to be aware of that. Your best bet would be to angle the ship as best you can. However, that's not going to be easy. And the reason for that is we look at the fore and aft armor. Our fore and aft armor plating and deck are all 25 millimeters. And that is pretty limited armor. That means that a lot of ships can uh, penetrate through your fore and aft section. And the big cow gun ships at tier 7 are going to dominate you. So just be aware of that. Islands are going to have to be your friend. All right, the overview of the ship. It's got superior HE penetration, which is great. And with Nelson on here, we get an additional 15% to that damage, so that's really nice. It's also got pyromania, above average chance that HE shell is causing a fire. That's 41% chance, which is awesome. And there's our con there, the modest guns. So 356s are pretty low battery for a tier six ship. All right, so let's move out of here. We'll just quickly look at the consumables. Uh, standard damage control. We got repair, repair party is 326 per second. And we actually got a sonar. There's one of the big differences between uh, the King George V and the Duke of York is we get a sonar on here. The sonar is not that great. You know, you have to use it sparingly in a real critical, I think, situation. If you use it properly, you'll get that torpedo detection of three kilometers and detection of ships 4.2 uh, kilometers, which is kind of nice to have. All right. So we got a booster on there. We got the camouflage, which is the permanent. And there we have it. Okay. Now let's, this is what I'm looking at here. We're going to look at the Azure Lane Commander Nelson. She is high level. She's a level 16 with a uh, legendary level 2, I believe. Yep, there she is. Inspirations without question, Cunningham first, giving me that uh, increased accuracy, and Cunningham is high level, so we got a plus 4.5%. And the newest uh, battleship commander out there from the German fleet is uh, Scharnhorst, the Azure Lane Commander. I got her at a high level, and I wanted her sniper skill as an inspiration, giving me an additional minus 3.4% to the dispersion. So you combine this... With the ship itself, that's 10.4, and with marksmanship, that would make it around 17 to 18% um, dispersion, um, additional bonus to your dispersion circle, which is great to have. You kind of need that. Now, base traits nice because uh, you have incoming damage to my battleship, 
every time I take a hit, it's going to be a minus four point minus five point four percent to that. I do like that. First skill is maxed out. We're going with can uh, flammable cannoneer. I'm not going with this because I don't want to take the reduction in my range. So I will take the flammable cannoneer. It's tricky and risky to take that because of all the HE spamming at uh, tier six and seven. However, we're going with that because we want the range and we want the additional accuracy. With with uh, Cunningham, we now have almost a ten percent additional accuracy, and I think that is really good. Uh, second, we are going to be taking Big 7. The Big 7 gives us the plus 16% to both, both AP and HE shell damage. However, our penetration of our, of our battleship cells will be reduced by 15%. You know, that's okay. I want the extra damage. We're going to take Marksmanship here, giving us minus 7% to Dispersion, and Master Mechanic down here, giving us additional plus 2 repair charges. And finally, Legendary. Now, if we had um, Will to Rebuild, I would be taking that on here, but she doesn't have that. So what we're going to be using is Fight Fire with Fire. We're going to take the reduction in burning damage to my ship. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm choosing Flammable Cannoneer, and I'm hoping that this legendary skill will offset that. That's how I have Nelson set up for the, uh, for the Duke of York. So now we're going to take the Duke of York out into a standard match, and we'll see how it performs with uh, Nelson on here. All right, so please stick around for that. All right, well, thank you for sticking around to watch a match with uh, Nelson on board the Duke of York this time. We're going to be in the neighbor's map in a capture the base type uh, scenario. Pre-recorded match, so I'm simply doing the audio on top of it. And once again, this is not spectacular Kraken sinking gameplay or, or stuff like that. This is the basic average match that you can expect when you're playing with Nelson on board the Duke of York. So in Neighbors here, we're going up against some Tier 7 vessels. So this is a good test for the uh, Duke of York here. I find the Duke of York does struggle against a lot of the bigger uh, Tier 7 battleships. But uh, you got to persevere and find a way to do it. It's, it's, all, it's because of the thin armor in the 25mm uh, the, the fore and aft plating and deck, is, as well as the deck underneath the superstructure, is all um, very, very um, detrimental to the Duke of York. If it had uh, 32 mil, 30 mil, if it was, <laughs> it would be so much better. But anyways, we got what we have here, so we have to try and make two. I do like the Duke of York because of the historical context of the ship. I love the British battleships, so I want to make this ship work. So this is the one with the Nelson on board, Cunny um, Nelson. I want to get an accuracy dispersion build with some of the traits of um, Nelson here, particularly the Big Seven. Really interesting to see how well that'll work here. We'll be utilizing both HE and AP rounds in this match. And right now we're firing uh, some of our HE rounds onto the uh, Tier 7 French battleship, the Ritchie. And that would be one very, very tough opponent for the, uh, the Duke of York. So we got, uh, we got some shells in there. Now normally um, we could start fires pretty good with that. So we, with our first two volleys there, we got no fires from our HEs. I don't think we get another shot on the Richie. I think it's behind the island, but um, what I think is an uh, Odin appears, so we'll, we'll do some shots on the Odin as well. Now, the good thing is, at least the Odin's got a uh, smaller caliber gun, so it's more of a good opponent for the uh, Duke of York. And uh, so, let's see how the uh, Duke of York handles the Odin. All right, so there it is right there. It's giving us a broadside, but uh, when I fire my first salvo here, I think he's gonna bank away. But we still might get a couple of hits on him. Like, there he goes. He's moving away. And the, sh the shots are going in. And sure enough, there we got incapacitation, but no fire. We're not having very much luck on the fire this time. Now, I do plan on going through the Duke of York and trying out all five uh, battleship commanders on here. And see which one performs the best. And that's the one I'll stick with eventually. So... Here we go again. Now, uh, we've been focusing on the accuracy dispersion builds right now, but we'll have to see about the survivability builds as well. See how those ones pan out. So, the shells went away. And that time we got our fire. There it is. There's a fire right there. A couple penetrations as well. Now, we are doing about 7,000 in potential uh, damage when it comes to the uh, HE shells with the ship. We got about 12,100 um, AP damage with the ship potential with uh, the AP rounds. Now we're going to throw another uh, another salvo of uh, HE there at the uh, Odin. And we and we were able to take a, I just, I stayed there stationary because I wanted to see how the um, Odin shells, um, how well our armor 
in the broadside would deal with those Odin shells coming in. It, ha it held up pretty good there. Okay, now we're going to move forward here. And um, we're going to see what we have over on the, uh, the eastern side here. We're going to kind of turn it in towards the island in a moment. And see what ships we have over there. Now, what ship? We have the, the Ritchie has really gotten knocked down quite a bit there. We've got a King George V out there, the sister ship of the Duke of York. And for those who want to know, there were five ships in this class built. And uh, let's have a look. We've got a shot on the, on the King George there from our rear turret. And it uh, looks like we may have missed. Yes, we missed with that turret. Now they have the Azuma over there, another tier 7 ship. And we're going to take a shot on the Azuma just before it gets behind that island of the forward batteries. So six guns forward, fire away. And we'll see how the... Uh, the HE shells uh, run there. I'm sure I'm going to be switching over to AP relatively soon just to see how they handle with um, with Nelson. And uh, let's see. Uh, we're still on HE at the moment. Looks like I'm waiting to take another shot on the Azumi here if he appears from outside that island there. And the one thing I realized, when you have some Tier 7 battleships, for sure, you really want to try to make use of islands. Get, the islands become your friend, for sure, when it comes to Duke of York. Okay, so there's the, our, our um, HE's hit again, but no fire again that time. Oh, we're sitting at 39,000 in damage. That's not bad with all the uh, HE shell shooting we've been doing at the start of the match. Only 39. We have no sinkings, but we have a bunch of main battery hits. A few incapacitations, yeah. and we got some fire up there as well. But right now, the fire starting is below average at the moment compared to what I have been getting. But you know what? That's what happens with uh, these ships, right? Okay, now we have a chap. And we're going to try... Our... Now, I do know that um, the Duke of York, with its AP rounds, is one heck of a good cruiser killer. Now, here we are. We're firing on a cruiser with our HE rounds this time. and see how they do. And sure enough, we got incapacitation, just a couple penetrations there. Then the uh, the other ship just hammered it, which I believe was the Lyon. And I believe the Lyon should be able to take it out here. All right, but there goes the Chappie. Okay, so we have nothing within range now, so we're going to push forward here. And down into the area to help support that Lyon that's making a bit of a push down the center there. But we're just going to slowly move up. The uh, Duke of York is not a ship, I repeat, not a ship that you're going to want to uh, play too aggressively. Let alone, you, you're not going to want to heavily push with this ship. I think with this ship, you're going to be doing a lot of sitting along the uh, medium range area, medium to long range, and uh, fighting from there. Now, right now, I can't... Uh, this, one's, it's, this is not going to be a brawler. <laughs> this is my... Uh, my opinion at the moment. Okay, so we have a Colorado off to the right. You just saw a glimpse of it right there. There's the Colorado. So we're going to take a shot on the uh, Tier 6 American uh, battleship there. And we have a King George hiding behind the island over there. And uh, that blue uh, battleship in front of me, the Allied ship, is going to go over there and try and coax that King George in. So we're taking a shot on the Colorado there. Let's see how those ones handle. As we're still using our HE. And sure enough, we just got uh, a couple, just a penetration there, but no fires. And we got a Nelson over there. Now we will be tangling with that Nelson at the end of the match. And that's a good fight. It's a good test of the Duke of York. We'll be dealing with that at the end of this match. So stay tuned for that one. And it's going to be a brawl. <laughs> so... That's kind of nice, too, because I want to see how this ship will handle that way against those 16-inch guns of the uh, Nelson. Okay, so we're going to move on up. And uh, now we switched over to AP. So we're going to be utilizing our AP rounds, not on the Colorado there, but to, on the King George V. And we'll see how they hit. With Nelson on board, you got to remember, we have uh, potential damage of about 12,100 points. Uh, from our AP rounds from the Duke of York with the Nelson's uh, super uh, uh, big red 7 skill. I was thinking about seeing if I can get a shot in that Colorado, but it's just not going to happen. 
because when I look back at the King George, I see he's starting to poke his way out, or he's, or he's on his way out. So we're definitely going to be helping out our uh, Allied ship there because the Allied ship is uh, pretty much down in points. So we're going to fire our six guns into the broadside of the uh, King George, who's at half at the moment. There they go. We're going to hit... Uh, yeah, we did it. We did a few penetrations there, but nothing significant. Nothing at all significant there. So we will try again. Okay, we just lost the Allied ship there, so now it's just going to be me and the King George. Now we're going to go. We're going to we're going to angle so we can get the rear turret into this as well. We want the four extra guns here because I'm pretty confident that the King that the uh, Duke of York can sink this King George. Okay, we got the shells in, and then we didn't get the sinking, but uh, what happened there was is that the fire that was going ended up getting the sinking. So either way, we did assist on that, but practically. Now we're coming around here, and there's the Lyon right there. I've got, I hit the brakes big time, so I don't uh, smash into them too hard. We've got about 58,000 so far in damage, and uh, you know what, teams are pretty even there. Even though we're going to end up losing this match, the Duke of York did perform quite well in an average match with uh, Nelson. And I was quite happy about that. I'm finding Nelson seems to be working a lot better on the Duke of York than the uh, standard battleship commander for, for accuracy dispersion, Cunningham. Mind you, I still have had some half-decent matches with Cunningham, but Nelson's uh, proven to be uh, more effective so far. Or it just could be because I'm getting more experience with the ship. I'll probably go back to Cunningham and try him out a few more times. Either way, um, the Leon and myself are going to be powering over to the base. Which is the plan. We're going to get her up to about, I think, uh, with Nelson on here, we have about a 28-something uh, knots. Now, I was looking at the uh, Hood Commander, which is the speed build uh, battleship commander for the Hood. I think that could get this uh, ship of weight, could get this ship a, a few knots above 30. All right, now there is an enemy Nelson. Like I mentioned, we are going to be dealing with that Nelson right to the bitter end. That's what we're doing right now. We're going to be focusing on the Nelson right to the end of the match. And we're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it, like an in-close battle. And uh, we're going to card in here. Now what I'm doing here too is he's got 16-inch guns. So I'm trying to angle as best I can, and hopefully most of those 16-inch guns will strike into my armored belt line, which goes along the uh, water line or halfway from the hull to the water line. We might get a few of those shells on there, but most of the time I'm finding uh, shots from the other battleships will come into your uh, decking or your fore section. That's only got the 25 mil. So that is the biggest issue I have with this ship, is the armor. You are really going to get hammered big time against these ships with the big cow guns. So we're firing our AP rounds into the Nelson. It'd be basically useless to fire our HE rounds into it. We missed with that one there. And I realized, and I forgot what my turret time, I forgot that with Nelson on here, the turret time is extremely slow. So it's not the best ship to take into toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe battles with the uh, Nelson. But the idea is, is to stay angled up towards the Nelson. And when you get closer, you want to uh, cross Nelson and uh, cross its bow and then turn your turrets into the Nelson's broadside. That's the plan. And Nelson's going to sink the Leon there. And I'm thinking to myself, oh great, an Azuma and a Nelson now. Well, it won't be, the Nelson should have no problem taking me out here. But, um,. We'll see what happens here. Now, my secondary's just started to go out. They only have a 4.7 kilometer range. Now, I'm holding my shells here because what I want to do is I want to get my uh, turrets in. So as I cross his uh, broadside, I'll be able to shoot into his broadside. But that's when I realized, oh crap, I forgot. This is Nelson, very slow turret turn. You're not gonna get that turn. So you're not gonna be able to do that. So now, so we survived 
that. Now we're gonna cut across here, hit the turn on here. All right, turrets are turning slow, slow at that 45. I wasn't expecting that. But if I can get them around and into its broadside, I could sink that Nelson in one shot. Here we go, we're taking the shots now. And there we go, we got four citadels. We got the devastating strike. We get the sinking. Duke of York prevails in the one-on-one -on -one with the Nelson there. So the Duke of York can have can have its moments for sure. Anyways, we've got 103,000 in damage, which is great. We lost the match though. Uh, four citadels, only a single sinking there. We got number one on the leaderboard for our team, and we made over 230,000 in credits. So the ship will earn you credits. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this uh, guiding gameplay with Duke of York with Nelson on board, please give me a like. And of course, be wonderful if you subscribe for future videos on my channel. Other than that, this is Spotted Captain Gamer. I'll see you next time on the seas.